don't have to touch it. All you do is talk. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. Can everyone hear me out there? I guess so, since you got quiet. Uh, good evening and welcome to our uh, candidate forum for the um, town of Warrington mayoral race and our city council race or town council race. Uh, my name is Joe Martin. I'm president and CEO of the Falkir Chamber of Commerce. And we're so happy to be here and working with Falkir Now and the Falkir Times of uh, putting this wonderful uh, candidate debate on so that we can give you guys the information so that once you go to the polls, you can make a decision that's best for you. So um, I just wanted to welcome everybody real quickly it's my pleasure to introduce Philip Mulford the president of Mulford mediation Philip has been providing our uh, facilitator position for a lot of these candidate debates for many years we really do appreciate his volunteer work in doing this and it's my great pleasure to introduce Philip Mulford thank you Joe so tonight just to go through the logistics for you we're going to be asking Panelist over here on the far right, Lou Emerson of Fauquier Now and Leland Schwartz with the Fauquier Times are going to be asking questions of the candidates for mayoral race first. After we complete that process, we're going to then switch to the at-large candidates for town council. Sponsors that we want to make known and appreciate, Fauquier Now, Fauquier Times, and the Fauquier Chamber of Commerce. Thank you very much for sponsoring this. Also want to thank Nick Napolitano, the principal of Taylor Middle School, for making this auditorium available to us for this evening. And Bob Rankin over here on the sound. Thank you very much for being here. So we're going to have opening um, remarks from each candidate. They'll have 90 seconds for opening remarks. Then we're going to move to the question and answers. Each candidate will have 90 seconds to answer each question. Then closing remarks at the end, one minute each. I've asked the candidates not to speak to the time, but to speak to the, the issue, the subject. Once they're done, then they're done. They don't need to continue to speaking for the full 90 seconds. I would ask the audience, please, to refrain from interacting at all after the, after the opening remark, applause is fine, at the end of it, after closing remarks, but in between, please, if you would just allow the question and answer to go forward is without any interruption. That's the best way to get the most questions and answers and most information out to you all. So if you could please do that, that would be great for everybody. Um, if you have an interest in asking a question, there are cards being circulated in the area. Um, who's got cards available? Somebody want to raise cards up? Let people know you've got cards available. There we go. And so you can write down a question. They'll pick up the card and hand it to the questioners up here who will consolidate those. I can assure you that we're not going to get to every question, but they will try every, make every effort to get to ones as many as they can. Earlier, we had a uh, drawing of cards to decide who was going to go first. And the person who will go first is uh, Grace Rigby, who will have the opening remark first. And then she will close first as well. And Carter Neville will be going second with both opening and closing remarks. We're going to go from 6.45 till Joe has just reminded me that it might be helpful for people to silence their cell phones. So if you could do that, great. We're going to go until about 7.20, where we're going to then make the switch to the town council candidates. Okay? So without further ado, have I left anything out, anybody? Are we all good? Okay. So Ms. Rigby, would you please present your opening remarks? Hello. Um, I would like to thank Fauquier Now, the Fauquier Times, and the Fauquier Chamber of Commerce, and also Taylor Middle School for hosting this event for us tonight. I'm extremely grateful to all of the citizens who came out and are participating in the event, and I'm very eager to answer your questions. It is community involvement from excited citizens like you all and everybody watching online that gives this town our energy and life. The enthusiasm, enthusiasm paired with our quaint picturesque town is truly what gives Warrington our character, our charm, and our brand. I'm running for mayor of Warrington because I truly love this town. I was born here, raised here, I've started my career here, uh, and I, in the future I hope to practice law here. As a young woman in our community, I'm especially concerned with the future of our economic prosperity, the variety of our housing options, and also the safety of our families. 
I know that the town council needs to take actions that encourage economic growth and public health and safety, but keep in mind that our most cherished aspect of Warrington, Virginia is our small town feel, which gives us the unique charm and beauty. If elected position of mayor, generally a non-voting town council member, my strongest sense of responsibility would be committed to representing the views of our citizens for the next four years. I would truly be honored to share my youth, passion, and diligence with the town of Warrington. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Rigby. Mr. Neville. Good evening. First, thank you to our sponsors for hosting us this evening. It's an honor and a privilege to be seated here before you. I am here tonight for the very same reasons each of you are here. I'm here because I am passionate about our town, and I want nothing more than to see it enjoy the success it deserves. I was born here. My parents ran a small business on Main Street for 35 years. I learned directly and early on that this town is a fighter. It has been against the ropes many times over the years, but it has never been down for the count. When my wife decided to open her own business, there was no other place in question than right here in Warrington, precisely because of that strength and confidence of community. It takes more than just talk and opening your own business, your open your own business doors to ensure that our fighting spirit continues. Community involvement is essential. And so I got involved in our Virginia Main Street program where I was the principal behind bringing flower baskets to Old Town and was among the core group of town leaders that rebuilt the program into Experience Old Town Warrington. I joined the ARB and since becoming the chair have been working with the planning department to streamline the application process to make it easier and more friendly to both businesses and residents alike without compromising the mission to preserve our historic character. I have been inspired to take all of these actions on all of these things because I have been listening to our customers, our residents, our tourists, our visitors, and I hear you loud and clear. Much more needs to be done. This town has potential. We have possibility. This is why I'm running for mayor. Thank you, Mr. Neville. Panelists? Okay, this will be a question for both candidates, starting with Mr. Neville. How do you describe the role of the mayor in Warrington, and what prepares you to serve in that role? The mayor of Warrington needs to be visionary. The mayor needs to be the one who starts to chart the course as to where we can and should head. We have been fighting 20, 20th century battle, or 21st century battles with 20th century strategies. And it, it's time that we start to address very much the fact that the future is going to be far different than what we have gotten to in this point. The mayor's role is finding that vision. It is building a coalition. It is working with the counselors. It is making sure that we are all on board together. I have been prepared for this in 14 years of business. We have been listening to customers right and left. We have heard this all along. I have been studying other communities, and so I understand very much that uh, a vision is what drives this town forward, and the mayor's opportunity as the leader of the Board of Government, as the one who has the ability to appoint committees, as the one who has the ability to influence agendas, very much needs to be the one to push that vision forward. We cannot reach the 21st century by looking backwards. Okay, Ms. Rigby. Thank you. The role of mayor in Warrington has often or recently been described as more of a figurehead position because of the lack of vote on the town council, but I do not believe that's true. I believe that the mayor has a completely separate obligation to the town than the council does. Um, the job of the mayor is not only to mediate the council and to form a cohesive vision, but also to represent the town's interest. Um, the council members, of course, are voting for what they believe is your best interest, but the mayor brings what you think to the table. The mayor is representing you, all of you, all of the wards, all of Warrington, and I, <clears throat> I think that it's important for a mayor to have a vision for town, and I, I, I hope to express that to you over the course of this forum. 
I believe that the mayor essentially needs our next mayor needs to have a new vision for Warrington and needs to be able to work together with the current town council members. Thank you. Mr. Neville, how would you enhance Warrington's image and its profile as a place to visit, shop, and invest? That's a very broad question, and there's a lot of uh, answers to that. Um, on the a way that we attract business, we need to become far more business friendly. We need to streamline processes whereby the applicant permitting process is less cumbersome. We need to find ways in which that um, we incentivize and entice businesses to attract to come here. On a broad scale, if we are going to attract, uh, a, if we are going to compete in an increasingly competitive and very difficult market, we really need to start thinking in big, bold terms. Um, our streets are not conducive towards the cafe seating that attracts restaurants, that builds restaurant communities. Um, so we need to start to build out and start to look towards landscaping, towards uh, construction solutions that are going to create the social spaces that tomorrow's consumers are going to demand. So if we are going to be relevant and com competitive in the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years, we have to change, we have to understand that our landscape as it exists right now was built for the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. That has changed dramatically, and it is time that we start to really put forth a Warrenton vision of space, public space in particular, that is enticing to new dynamic businesses, that attracts families, that attracts so, young residents, it attracts elderly, it attracts everybody to want to spend time in our space as opposed to going to other counties to spend their social time. Thank you. Ms. Rigby. <laughs> Thank you. I agree that it's very important for us to attract businesses to Warrington and to attract tourists. I think that currently, um, especially in the historic district, we don't have a very competitive business market to towns near us like Culpeper or Middleburg. Um, I know that in the past some businesses have attempted to have longer hours or open on Sundays or Mondays, but it's not always advertised, the town doesn't always know, and if nobody knows, how is it going to make a difference? Um, I think that in the future, I th we need to utilize the, um, the one experience Old Town to form a cohesive group of businesses that are working together to promote themselves as well as others and to support each other. Um, I believe that we need to have events on Main Street like sidewalk sales that was already proposed and I'm extremely excited for. I think that we need to draw people in with our charm. Warrington does have an amazingly beautiful landscape currently and I, I like to preserve that while we continue to grow our economic prosperity. Thank you. Okay, another question for both candidates, starting with Ms. Rigby first. Uh, for years, the council and other town officials have talked about the potential of annexing what is known as the panhandle, where the car dealerships and outback steakhouse stand. Warrington also has uh, large tracts of undeveloped land to the north. Do you think it makes sense for Warrington to grow its boundaries uh, short term, long term? And please explain. I think that if Warrington were to pursue this more seriously, we would definitely need a lot of public hearings going forward that encourage citizens' time. That's honestly the most important aspect of any decision of the town. Um, I think that until our citizens and the business owners and the people who currently live there get a chance to speak to us, I don't think that we can make a decision like that. Um, that would change those people's lives living in town. They are on a different kind of water and sewer system. Their uh, homes are subject to, to different regulations and as well as their businesses. I believe that if we could find a compromise, um, it would be an interesting project to take on, but I think that I'd definitely like to hear more from the citizens and the businesses before Warrington would move on with that decision. Okay, Mr. Neville. 
the uh, panhandle expansion, obviously in the fact that it is siphoning off a significant amount of tax dollars um, from the town is, is worth considering. However, with an annexation comes an expansion of services, an expansion of, of, of deliverables that will put a cost burden on the town. So as a project putting forward, it demands more examination and I would propose, and I think that in going forward, our success depends more and more on increased collaboration with our county. And if we can find ways in which we may not necessarily need to annex that, but we find ways to uh, create service districts or uh, some element of, of, of revenue sharing where the understanding that a car dealership two miles or one mile less from a country Chevrolet enjoys different benefits than, uh, than an in-town car benefit, that we start to work with the county to develop perhaps what is a, might be a better solution that allows us to uh, capture some of the lost revenue that that is putting on pressure on us uh, without having to expand services. I think that this definitely needs county involvement. It needs collaboration. This is something that is not ours to um, grab, nor is it something that the county is willing to give up. So this is a collaboration, and it does involve the in in involvement of citizens, and most particularly, it involves the uh, uh, involvement of the uh, businesses at, at at the heart of this. You know, so um, so yeah. Ms. Rigby, could you speak to the issue that a lot of businesses think there's too much focus on Old Town, uh, given that 90 percent of the retail sales are out on the out on Broadview? Yes, of course. Um, that is a sentiment that has been expressed to me many times by businesses off of Main Street. Um, they're concerned that they're not receiving the same level of <clears throat> cooperation and help from the town council as the businesses on Main Street or even in the greater historic area, historic district are. Um, I think that there needs to be an increased communication between the town council and the businesses in Warrington. Um, Moving forward, we've started making a, an email list. Um, we'd like to incorporate businesses in all of our decisions. Uh, the businesses, especially on Broadview, do make up 90% of uh, the business revenue that the town takes in. And it's, it's very important that they're involved in decisions like the Broadview project or anything else that might affect them directly. Thank you. You want to ask Mr. Neville, would you address that being from Old Town? For a long time, we've divided our sense of our identity between Old Town and what was once called the Bypass, which is now Lee, Broadview, and Shirley. Um, and in, in the evolution of a business development districts, you've seen you know, flight from a CBD to the bypass district and strip malls. And then when the advent of, of box stores, it went from there. Through that time, the division became as to where the resources were going to be allocated because uh, you know we were all competing for the same customers and for the same businesses, and so we were at odds with one another. That no longer is the case. Uh, we are now competing against uh, competition from Prince William County. We're competing with competition from Amazon. Um, so us fighting amongst ourselves over resources or us in any way assuming that there's division between what matters to Broadview, to Lee Highway, to Shirley, and what matters to Old Town um, is petty and it's going to hold us back. We are all in this together. We really, really, really need to start to understand that investment, improvement, business development and growth along Broadview benefits Old Town. When Old Town benefits and when they are thriving then more people then look towards Lee Highway. It is we have got to remove ourselves from the sense of fighting amongst ourselves and really looking to the whole picture. We're in this together. If we are going to survive economically, if this town is going to reach its potential, it is absolutely going to do it if we invest at all corners of our business. Each one benefits the other and each one receives benefits from others. So it is, it is absolutely essential that we stop thinking that we exist separately. There Mr. is one warrant and Mr. There Neville, is I'm going to have to cut you off here. You can say Thank perhaps you. catch that up on another one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
um, you'll have another chance. Um, for decades, we've talked about Broadview Avenue, and, and now we're close uh, to full design of a plan, an improvement plan that would include a series of medians, um, controlled U-turns, bike and pedestrian lanes. How do you evaluate that plan? There's a lot of opposition among business and property owners along Broadview. Mr. Neville, then Ms. Rigby. This project has unfortunately been uh, unfairly um, handled, improperly handled. There's a lot to it. And there is a very important need to flow traffic um, as is coming from the development in the Culpeper County area. Um, it, it is a need that needs a solution. Um, it needs a better solution that we have thus been able to uh, patch together. Um, where plans have been changed, uh, deliverables have been uh, redesigned without input from the business community, um, that needs to change. Uh, if we are going to have anything happen along the Broadview Avenue corridor, we need to understand that ensuring that it is a thriving business district has to be our number one goal. Um, moving the traffic is important, but we cannot in any way um, deter current business or future business from wanting to relocate there. So it needs greater impact and greater input, greater thought towards how it is going to affect that. Um, and it needs to be more respectfully approached to that community. Um, so you, oppo you oppose what has been proposed? I oppose the way it has been done. I oppose the, uh, the current uh, solution. However, um, the current solution I know is still under consideration and that there are solutions that can be achieved that where it can solve. So, okay. All right. Thanks. Ms. Rigby? Um, I agree. The, the plan is currently still in the design phase. There's not a set plan yet. Um, <clears throat> and we haven't heard from the community. We've had uh, a couple business, Broadview Avenue business meetings, and um, I think I would agree that businesses are unhappy with the current plan. Um, opposition is often that they were happier with the old plan. However, the old plan was never approved by an engineer, and this plan is the goal, the main goal of the Broadview Avenue project is to ensure safety of not only the drivers, but the pedestrians and anybody operating a vehicle. Um, Broadview Avenue is currently <clears throat> one of our, one of our uh, busiest zones. It's, we have a traffic problem there, and it it's causes dangers, and it causes accidents. And I don't think that anybody would disagree that there is more danger driving through Broadview than in other areas of Warrenton. Um, and I agree that we would need to hear from the business districts. This is going to affect, affect them di directly. And it's, their, their input is extremely important. But we need to focus on the goal of safety of our pedestrians and of our vehicles, because that's where the funding is coming from. Um, VDOT has pledged uh, <clears throat> eight mil oh, I'm sorry, it's a, approximately $8 million. They have allocated $4 million to this project. We have 1.6 from previous projects, and also we have $1 million in this project. And Ms. Rigby, I'm going to need to cut you off here. Thank you very much. C could you both address this, and Mr. Neville first? Uh, do you believe in the concept of mixed-use infill behind Main Street on both sides? Elaborate a little bit on that. Uh, do you think the, the parking lots should be re, uh, should be leveraged to build retail and residential units? Is that to me first? Yes, please. No. Um, we have a parking issue, as is known. Parking is, we need to look at our parking issue as not necessarily based upon what our immediate needs are, but what our future needs will be based upon what we expect our business growth to be if we're going to build it. Um, there is room for parking deck construction with some mixed-use infill. There are many plans that we have looked at um, in the past and that can also be then considered in the future. Um, proposals that have been floated by others to turn it over to full development um, 
in, in my opinion, would be devastating to our town. It is absolutely um, the, the, the time, the construction, it is the, the cost, the drainage issues, any number of engineering uh, promises that have been uh, um, sold to perhaps some gullible people. Um, it's, it's, it will run businesses out of town and you will have a dead Main Street, perhaps at the potential of having a few businesses behind. Developing a parking garage with some degree of, of mixed use infill to help offset the cost of it is definitely worth pursuing, but on a scale that is given towards providing maximum amount of space for parking to allow for Old Town to develop a better uh, pedestrian area to attract more customers and businesses. Thank you. Ms. Rigby? <clears throat> I would agree that I think that that would not be the wisest decision of our town. Um, seeing that there are currently vacancies on Main Street, I don't currently see the need for uh, more retail space on Main Street. Um, and I think that parking is a huge issue right now, and to take away those parking spaces, especially the ones behind Great Harvest, those are all those are one of the all-day lots, and I think that it's currently being used appropriately. Okay, a question for both of you, starting with Ms. Rigby. What role, if any, should town government play in addressing um, our substance, substance abuse problem, particularly opioid addiction? <laughs> Our town, not only the town council, but our citizens, our whole town, we all need to recognize that in Fauquier County, in the Commonwealth of Virginia, opioid, the opioid academic, epidemic has been described as, as a crisis and as an epidemic. And I think that we need to first address that we do currently have a problem with some of our citizens. It's, and it's something that I know strikes a very deep chord in a lot of people. Um, I, I cannot express my deepest condolences for anybody who is not only suffering from this problem, but who is not currently able to get help. I believe that the McShin Foundation, who is currently um, in Warrington, if we could find an, uh, an appropriate section, uh, an appropriate area for their uh, residential center, I believe that that would be ben greatly beneficial to the town. Do you think the town council did the right thing in denying the zoning permit for McShin on John Marshall Street? Um, specifically denying the zoning permit, I would have to respect the decision of the town council. That area is not zoned as a residential area. Um, other business were worried about their uh, their property value, they're worried about their business, and I understand the caution for a residential facility in the central business district. I, I understand their decision. Thank you. Mr. Neville, same questions, please. Um, this is obviously a issue that is um, so broad reaching and there are so many uh, avenues that need to be coordinated to uh, create a solution. Uh, strong policing obviously needs to continue, um, but where the town has the greatest advantage perhaps to uh, serve in this is to seek uh, grants from AmeriCorps or any number of uh, uh, grants available to help coordinate. We have so many great community-based resources um, from you know, families overcoming drug addiction, from Come As You Are, from McShin, peer-to-peer uh, -peer support groups. Um, from what I have heard in listening, the biggest problem is, is that uh, two things. One, we are treating this as a crime problem, of which it is. Um, but on the user side, it is an addiction problem. It is a health issue. And if we really want to serve and save lives, we have got to put the greater emphasis on the health care issue of this. That means providing and making sure that no addict is at a loss when they are looking for a detox opportunity. If detox requires you driving you know, to, to Culpeper or to Manassas, it doesn't cost you out of pocket. Um, that's not right. If you are seeking help, we need to find ways by which that is made more accessible. 
um, when families are concerned and they don't know who to turn to and they don't know which group to call, uh, a hotline which can help provide you know assistance to say you need to call families overcoming or Mr. Neville, to recovery. Mr. Neville, I hate to cut you off. Okay. Community <laughs> service support through grant funding. Uh, quickly, yay or nay on the zoning vote last fall? Nay, it was a proper decision based upon that. This is for both of you. If it were totally up to the town and totally up to either one of you, what would you do with the library? And Ms. Rigby, would you? <laughs> what, um, what would I do with the current library? Or are you uh, talking about the... What would you like to see done in the future? Okay. Um, <clears throat> I know that propo proposed there was a, a library 2.0 plan, which of course, if we were able to receive the funding for that, that would be an amazing opportunity for our town. And to, uh, <laughs> and to get another resource would be just an amazing opportunity, but we need to look at the funding. We need to look at what's a viable option for us. Mr. Neville, no. Libraries are repositories of our public knowledge. They are places where our history is housed um, and our knowledge is sourced. It needs to be publicly owned and publicly sourced, and it needs to be in the possession of the citizens. Um, a, a public library, public library use is on the rise in the United States. We see this across the country. Millennials are using them in increasing numbers. It is a social space. There are so many positive reasons why a library contributes to our community, both economically and socially and culturally. Um, I am absolutely in favor of and would continue to uh, champion an individual freestanding public library in our community um, because otherwise, at some point, knowledge is going to be owned by Amazon. We need as citizens to stand up and, and take claim of the knowledge that is in it's what created our democracy, and, and it is absolutely essential that we retain ownership of it. One more question for both candidates before we go to closing remarks. Let's close. Yeah, let's close. Go to closing? Okay. So closing remarks, we're going to start with uh, Ms. Rigby. One minute, please, for closing remarks. <laughs> Thank you very much. I would, again, just like to express my gratitude to everybody here tonight, everybody who helped put this on. Um, thank you so much for your questions. I. I am so grateful for the opportunity to speak for you, and I'm so grateful to answer the questions. And if you have any questions for me in the future, I'd love to receive them over email or a phone call. Um, and I'm, I am always open to talking with everyone, and I would just, again, like to thank you all so much for coming. Mr. Neville, one minute. Likewise, thank you all for coming. An engaged electorate is vital to building the community we want to be. Furthermore, it underscores the passion we all have for this town and the desire we share to see it thrive. That passion has existed for as long as I can remember. It raised me, and it, precisely, and it is precisely the reason why Kathleen and I opened our business here. When increasing, numbers of residents, when increasing numbers of young residents are stepping up and getting involved to better our community, you know our town is exceptional. And you know that innovative vision, backed by experience, needed to deliver, is needed. Innovation and vision have guided every step of my civic involvement, and it has produced results. The demand for a results-oriented vision is the very reason I am running for mayor. Bold new ideas, bold possibilities, and bold vision are essential. And it will take courage, it will take conviction and collaboration to make it happen. We have hard work ahead, and I am prepared and energized to lead the way. My sleeves are rolled up. When you go to the polls on May 1st, I hope to earn your vote. And more than anything, I hope to inspire you and your support to help make our shared, our, to make our shared vision a reality. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Noble. All right, thank you, Ms. Rigby, Mr. Neville. We're now we're going to have a few minutes of a break. We're going to pick right back up at 7.30 with the candidates for the at-large seats, town council. If the candidates for the at-large seats would please come forward. Still standing, right? <laughs> well done. Thank you very Congratulations. much. Congratulations. So, thanks very much. Appreciate it. Welcome. Absolutely. Hey, Mask, could you see it?
Ladies and gentlemen, if you will please take your seats. We're going to get going here in just a minute. Candidates all set? Panelists ready to roll? So I'm gonna, you don't probably need introduction for these candidates, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Starting on my right, Sonny Reynolds, Renard Carlos, Sean Polster, and Keith McDonald at the far end, running for the two at-large seats for town council. Panelists, we have the same format, 90 seconds for the answers after a 90 second opening remark. After the opening remarks, you're welcome to applaud. After the opening remarks are complete, though, please save your applause until the end of the closing remarks without any response to the questions and answers as we go forward. The candidates will have one minute for closing remarks. So opening remarks, we have drawn cards. Keith McDonald is going to go first. You have 90 seconds, Mr. McDonald. Please proceed. Thank you. Good evening. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out tonight. And I'd also like to thank the organizers and our moderators, Mr. Mulford, for their efforts putting this forum together so that we can address the issues facing our community. My running for town council is about the town and its future. For me, it is about the ideas and solutions. Warrington is the town I call home. It is a town I am fully invested in. It is a town that I love. My campaign is about saving, preserving, restoring the prosperity of our historic Warrington. It is about our future viability and quality of life. Most of our economic problems stem from our inability to maximize the utility of our central business district. We operate under land use practices that are suburban in design and have caused an overabundance of parking, which has stopped growth and change within the CBD. Over time, this has driven investment to areas where development is possible and cheaper, causing sprawl. The results, compounded over the years, have caused a systemic lowering of the utility and desirability of our central business district as an economic center. We have built out when we should have built in and built up. The results are property values, tax revenues, and retail sales are all in decline. With the latest rounds of store closings, we may well be at the tipping point regarding the central business district's viability. We need to address this on two fronts. First is the need to actively solicit new entrepreneurs to come to Warrington, to invest in our community, and occupy our existing building stock so that we can start the process of healing our historic center. It needs to be a multi-pronged approach that reaches out and taps investors and business owners on the shoulders to gain their attention, redirect their focus, and ultimately making the sale leading to the investment in our community. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Going next is Mr. Carlos. You have 90 seconds. Well, everybody, uh, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, I'm excited to be here, and I'm excited that you took the time out to come out here tonight and, and talk about the problems facing Warrington. Warrington can do great things, and I've seen it do things. I've seen it grow. I've seen it change. However, Warrington faces challenges. We've got a younger demographic who's moving here who feels like the council um, doesn't quite represent them or they're out of touch with them. We've got shop owners who are trying to keep their businesses open and are looking for a council who can take in new ideas and also bring in new ideas. We've got our retirees and our citizens who are also looking to the council to be able to address their needs as well. Um, as the, we see things continue to change, so must our council and so must our ideas. I'm running for the same reason I stated when I first started. I said Warrington is a fabulous place, but Warrington needs fresh perspectives. It needs new ideas. It needs new voices. Together, we can create new possibilities for Warrington. And I look forward to having that conversation with you tonight. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mr. Carlos. Ms. Reynolds. Yes, thank you, everyone, for coming. So, so right up to it. Okay. Someone said to me, serving on the town council is a full-time job. I said, no, it's a part-time job, but with greater rewards than most full-time jobs. Focusing on the positive is an important part of being a leader. 
With saying that, here are a few positive reflections. From June of 2014 to the present, the town has seen 237 new businesses open their doors. The town has helped reboot the Main Street program. There will be a mural on the side of Molly's, a love sculpture at the depot, a smothering of colored tables and chairs throughout Old Town, the continuation of First Fridays, Gumdrop Square, and the refreshing of the Eva Walker Memorial on Horner Street. The Town Council approved zoning of Walker Drive to bring entertainment options to, the, to Warrington. The Town Council also approved rezoning for Poets Walk, a memory care facility, and the American Legion Assisted Living Project, which in turn supports our veterans. The Town Council funded a second firefighter and it contributed to a new ladder truck. We upgraded the farmer's market. We approved a dog park. We built bathrooms in Eva Walker Park. We appropriated funds to replace aging police and public work vehicles. We approved bump outs on Main Street for safety. We added much needed town staff with a full-time economic development position. The town council worked on signage, parking, road safety, trails and connectability. We revitalized our water and sewer rates while also addressing aging infrastructure. We upgraded our website, added live streaming. We are contemplating our visionary comprehensive plan. Ms. Reynolds, I'm Last sorry. I'm going to cut you off. Can you save it for the closing? Okay. Thank you. Mr. Polster, please, 90 seconds. I want to thank everybody out here tonight in person and also those joining us on Facebook Live. I want to thank the sponsors for having a debate. I think it's important that the community hears from those that want to serve the community, and I'm glad there are multiple people looking to serve our community this year. I'm asking for your vote because I have a proven track record of increasing the quality of life of our residents and our community here in Warrington. We have had several successes over the past several years. We have a new event called Warrington Town Limits that last year attracted just under 13,000 people to our town for fireworks, for fun, but those people also spent money in our community. They spent money on gas, on food, they may have stayed the night. So these economic drivers help our economy as well. We have new wayfinding signs that have been 19 years in the working prior to my arrival, and we did it in under three months. And I'm also the first council member in Warrenton to achieve a leadership certification from the Virginia Municipal League for Advanced Training for Continuing Education to continue learning for you, learning how to serve you and our community better. I look forward to the conversation tonight, and I look forward to meeting you. Thank you. Panelists? This is a question for all of you, and Ms. Reynolds, would you start? The uh, new town economic strategic plan said that Warrington has a reputation as that place with horses that won't let you build anything. No, Lee, you, I can't. I have a hard time hearing do, you for some reason. Okay. The communication. She's having a hard time hearing you, Leland. Can you speak into the mic? Sure. The new uh, town economic report, uh, the strategic plan, uh, calls Warrington, or said Warrington has a reputation as that place with horses that won't let you build anything. Do you agree with that? And if so, how would you reverse it? And this question is for all of you. I still had a hard time hearing you, but I think I have the gist of this. Um, Warrington has a, uh, uh, a reputation, unfortunately, still, although I think we have improved it a great deal, of not being business friendly. Um, we, a lot of that had to do with uh, our planning uh, department and how slow it is to get an application through the planning department, uh, whether it be your business license or et cetera, et cetera. We have hired a new planning director. We have upscaled our uh, community development department. And I truly feel that we are working at a much, much faster and more progressive rate. So I think that's going to help with this a whole lot. Because when businesses first experience coming into the town of Warrington to open a new build, uh, business, sometimes that's their very first experience with the town. And it's very important. We are in the business to help not to hinder. Well, to talk about that real quick, 
one of the biggest things that when I talk with people, especially um, coming into, I worked on in Old Town now for a number of years, and whether you're a business owner there or you worked in the shops up there, you know some of the challenges. You know, parking is a challenge for us. You know, signage is a big challenge. And, and folks say, you know, it's not business friendly. When we look at government and the job of government, it's not necessarily to open up businesses, but we've got to get policies in place that help to be business friendly, right? We want folks to come into Warrington. I've had people say, I wouldn't start a business in Warrington. Why? Because it's not easy. They don't know how to do it. I've talked about getting a planning matrix. We can't take for granted that our town is small and we know everyone, but if someone's coming into the town who doesn't know anyone, how about a planning matrix? How about they make it as easy as possible to start a business in town? That's what we need to focus on. Before we bring in business, we've got to fix the issues that we've got going on right now. So I completely would agree that Warrington right now is not business friendly and we're driving our businesses away, as a matter of fact. So four years, ago, four years ago when I came on council, there was a phrase that I could not stand, and the mayor's going to laugh because he always laughed whenever somebody said it. This is the way we've always done it. <laughs> exactly. Well, that doesn't make it right. Ladies and gentlemen, I had the opportunity to meet the mayor of Jackson, Mississippi. Great guy. He said there's one thing that will get you fired from the city of Jackson, Mississippi. If you say that's the way we've always done it. He said, I'll give you a two-page letter. Thank you for your service to the citizens of Jackson, Mississippi. I wish you the best in your future endeavors. He also said, I'll sign it, just in case I'm the ever, ever the second black president of the United States. Well, that is what we need to do here in Warrington. We need to change the way we think. Fortunately, we have changed the way we think. We have hired great personnel in our planning department. I received a call this evening from Cecil Campbell. Cecil Campbell is trying to get a special use permit for his property here across from Walmart. He went and met with our planning department today. He called me and said, Sean, the change in the town in the past four years has been absolutely amazing. And I told him, I'm going to use his name tonight. He said, Sean, go ahead. He said, I was so blessed to deal with those people in planning. He goes, not only did they get it taken care of, he goes, they took my money in the same place, they took my permit, they took my information, and I'm done. I have to do nothing else. That is what we need to make Warrington known for. And by doing that, we can attract and retain our businesses here in our community. Thank you. To have businesses come to town, there has to be a place for them to land. We have six acres of parking on our high central business, central, central business district. We have about two acres of real estate up there for economic activity. We need to repurpose that land to a higher and better use. And we need to make the process of coming into town business friendly. When you get people into town, we're going to actually have to go out and recruit them with a, essentially a sales effort. Professionals are busy. To get them to see the benefits of our town, we need to put a multi-faceted marketing approach. Advertising, radio, communications, a person who is essentially a salesman for our community to go out and recruit entrepreneurs into our community. That's the approach I would take. Okay, complex topic for 90 seconds. We're going to start with Mr. Carlos and work this way and then back to Ms. Reynolds. Um, under the town manager's proposal, the operating budget next year would rise 6% to $15.7 million. But the overall budget, thanks to infrastructure investments, would rise 40% to $34 million. Um, how do you evaluate the town's budget and perhaps more importantly the tax structure? Who pays what? Mr. Carlos? Not a hard question at all. <laughs> so look, I did have a chance to review the budget and to look over it. We all know that things cost, right? That's just how it is. If you look at the tax structure and we understand where we get a lot of our revenue from, well, look, it's coming from business, right? Businesses pay a large percent of the taxes around here, the uh, meals tax being the largest. but. I'm a big proponent of, we've got to look to see how we spend our money and do it wisely. If you look through the budget and you go line by line down through it, there's some proposals in there that said, hey, that, that makes sense, right? We're looking at building, uh, getting new police cars. We're looking at things like that to try and get new uh, infrastructure. But if you look at some of the other things, you look at it, you say, wait, you want to spend $200,000 to do that? on this equipment or that equipment, we have to be very careful with the money that citizens have given or paid to the town, right? Um, 
if when money runs out, then you, 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 know, you want to stress your, your folks for more resources. Now, we've got to be careful about the way that we use your resources that you're paying in. Again, we know the businesses pay a higher percentage of the taxes, so we've got to listen to businesses as well, make sure that policies are in there that um, help everybody who's paying into the system. Thank you. Mr. Pollster. So two years ago, two and a half years ago, I was the only council member to vote against raising taxes on our residents. Raising taxes should be the absolute last resort of government. We need to live within our means. Do you know that we spend over $30,000 a year on black trash bags, be it only less than 40% of our um, town residents actually use them? But I brought the idea up, it hasn't been cut. So you say there's fat in our national budget, well there's fat in the town budget as well. There are places that we can cut, but there are places that we need to grow. Our greatest resource in our town is our human capital. We hear it all the time. We have great employees, and we need to make sure we take care of those employees. We need to make sure they have the appropriate health benefits. So things do cost money. You're right. But at the same point in time, we need to balance that. Last year, I proposed a reduction in our people taxes to ease the burden on our businesses. This year, Council Member Wood joined me in that call to reduce people taxes on our businesses. At some point, we have to relieve our businesses of the burden they have of bearing taxes for the entire town. But it is a delicate balance. Um, and I will remind everybody that this is a draft budget. It has not been approved and it has not been uh, through the council yet for the final cuts, of which I think will start Monday if you want to attend. 6 p.m., town hall. Go ahead, Keith. <laughs> I agree with Sean. I think we need to keep taxes as they are. Managing your money is a priority of, of what our function here is in, in government. That said, we need to spend money where we get a return on the investment. And the smartest thing to do is always to invest in yourself. By taking the land that we have, developing a development concept to bring in a desirable urban environment into the center of our town would have a return and a windfall beyond practically anything we could do. It would bring new businesses, new people with more spending, and it would raise the existing real estate value and economic activity by putting a total kind of synergistic growth there. And it would turn the center of town into a destination that's vibrant and alive. And it will have multiple spin-offs, increasing tax revenue, increasing the quality of life as we go forward. That would be the approach I would take, invest in ourselves and move forward. Our biggest cost in the budget is personnel. And every time we hire a new person, we need to think about it very carefully. However, you just heard a story um, about Cecil Campbell and how uh, he feels that our planning department has, uh, is doing a much better job. There's a reason for that, because we hired somebody. And we hired somebody really, really good. So we are asking for five new positions this year in the budget. Um, this is a work in progress. We have five budget hearings before this comes to council for a vote. We just had our first one on Monday, which was our, our, our first blush at looking at the budget. I don't think, uh, you know, there's a council member on there that isn't concerned about keeping uh, things in line. I don't think anybody on the council is interested in raising taxes. Um, one way to increase money is to increase business because a B-poll tax is one of our biggest uh, revenue uh, makers. One of the biggest expense this year in the budget is upgrading our sewer plant. There are things, infrastructure things, that have to be done. Infrastructure has, you hear even about this nationally, but it's affecting Warrington right now. We have failing infrastructure in many, many places, and our sewer plant has to be upgraded, and it's very, very, very costly. Um, we also have state and federal mandates for stormwater management, which is uh, costing us another great deal uh, amount of money this year. So all, every single council member has a wish list. And it's a compromise between all of us. And we go through this budget, we work together, we hammer it out. Ms. Reynolds, we, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to cut okay. you off. Thank you. Okay. Next question. Uh, this is a question for all of you and Mr. Polster, if you would. So everybody in town seems to agree that it would be uh, wonderful if Warrington had more entertainment venues. Any thoughts about what kinds and how to get them here? Again, I, I believe it was um, Mr. Renard that said we can create an environment for business, 
but we can't tell a uh, landowner where to put a business or what to do. So we need to create the, uh, the environment through policies and ordinances that are business friendly. Um, some of the things the government can do, though, to bring that, I remember uh, four years ago, there was a 13 year old that was in the audience that asked the question, said, I can't vote, but I want to know what you can do for entertainment because there's nothing to do. I hope he's here tonight because I hope he knows that I've tried for the past four years to bring things for activities for families and kids to do. Two years ago, we tried to put a mini golf course at the wharf, which council rejected. We tried to bring an archery range at the wharf, which, which didn't make it in the budget. This year, we tried to bring a splash pad for public-private partnership, um, where the town wouldn't bear most of the cost of that, but the town would have some stake in the game. So I have tried to bring those things for families, those entertainment pieces. But as far as a movie theater, as far as a bowling alley, the market's going to dictate that, not council. We can create an environment to where they're welcome, but we cannot make them come to the town of Warrington. Thank you. Would you go next, Mr. McDonald? Yeah, I think we, the, the real thing to focus in on here is creating the environment that brings in the sort of entrepreneurs and citizens that we'd like to add to our community. And um, it, where they land, is you don't have much control over other than through zoning and land use policies. And, um, <clears throat> you know, how you go about doing that is, is complicated. It's, it's a hard sell to get people to come in and invest in your community, but we need to make that effort. And it needs to be a focus, the primary focus going forward, in my view. Ms. Reynolds, would you? Going door to door, one of the, the things uh, that I hear, the number one top priority thing I hear is we want entertainment and where is the Walker Drive project right now? So the council voted on rezoning of the Walker Drive project with a uh, uh, part of that going towards entertainment. And it's called an entertainment feature. So it could be a movie theater, it could be a bowling alley, it could be darts, I don't know. But whatever it is, we don't have it now. So I have great faith that something's going to come there. They also are proffering, their proffer statement down there was like 40, 40 proffers. One of them was a splash pad. So we have, a, we have an applicant who is paying for a splash pad. So I don't see any reason why the citizens of this town should pay for one. So we will get entertainment. I feel confident of it. In fact, I, I actually know there are people looking for funding right now for a combination of movie theater and bowling alley. Whether that happens or not, that is out of my control, but I know there are people looking for that funding to go on that project. So I feel seriously that we are going to have entertainment in this town, and people have, stop, have, have to stop from going to Gainesville, spending their money in Gainesville, eating in Gainesville. We're going to bring them back home, folks. I feel strongly about it. Well, one of the things I talked about when I first was going to run, um, when we talked about going all the way to Gainesville, if I want to take my fiance out for a date night, we want to go somewhere, you're going down to Gainesville. Or you're going to go down to Fairfax. And that was just a huge loss to the town. We talked about one of the worst things being if I'm going down to there to go see a movie that I'm probably going to eat down there, and then by the time I finish doing that, I've spent all my money. There's nothing for me to buy in Warrington now, right? This is a loss that we can't afford. So how do you get it? We talked about government's not going to build, you know, shopping centers or anything, but we can do policies that make the town business friendly. You do policies that make your town business friendly, but it's important that you get a buy-in from your citizens. Look, if you get a movie theater here and nobody wants to come because they don't believe in your town anymore, that's just a loss for you and it's a loss for business. They're not going to come if you don't have a buy-in from your citizens. To get a buy-in from your citizens, you have to have an elected officials who listen to your citizens as well. So I think it's a whole package deal when we're talking about trying to get entertainment in here for Warrington. Thanks. Okay, another question for all of you, starting with Mr. McDonald, then going to that end of the table and coming back this way. How do you assess the proposed improvements to Broadview Avenue? Do you support them? Why or why not? I think the process was, um, could have been managed better. I think more input from the uh, property owners and the vendors in that area would have been a, a definite plus. I like the idea of an investment in that area. I think the plan does have some strong attributes in terms of traffic control and making that area more friendly and visually appealing. Whether it's the exact answer, probably not. And I think since it's not a done deal, we need to readdress that and refine the process. I'd like to move on and respond to something about Walker Drive. Walker Drive is absolutely the wrong thing for our community. 
it is sprawl by another name. It was pushed through under a special use permit, and they hand out and dangle these little trinkets like a movie theater, a bowling alley, to entice you know, the emotional response that this might be good for the community. It would be very nice to have those things in our community, but we don't have to use a special use permit to go through that process. We have to maintain and respect our zoning ordinances. Otherwise, the whole system falls down and it becomes a system of graft and favor peddling. And we always end up getting the lowest common denominator. As a community, we need to keep our standards high and demand a lot from developers to bring real intrinsic value and quality of life to this community. Walker Drive is not the answer. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. So, Ms. Reynolds, yep. same question about Broadview. Um, Broadview is, uh, uh, <laughs> discuss this in 90 seconds is uh, impossible. Um, first of all, there has been uh, four focus group meetings, uh, which included uh, town staff, VDOT, and most of the business owners on Broadview. Um, it also included uh, uh, council, uh, Councilman Kravitz and myself sat in on all four of those meetings. Other council members have sat in one or two. Um, th this is a huge, huge project. Uh, the main reasons to even look at Broadview right now is safety for vehicles and pedestrians, reduced congestion, and, and safe uh, access to our, our, our businesses. This is a $9 million safe grant from the state. The, if we don't use it, we lose it. It goes someplace else. Uh, the town of Warrington has already put $1 million into this. So if we don't do it, the, the citizens here, sitting here, you all lose a million dollars. So this is going to be a negotiation. Uh, we hope we're going to work this out. We've got a long way to go yet, but I'm confident that we will be able to work out a, uh, a, a situation with the businesses uh, and be able to handle the safety and the congestion and the revitalization of Broadview that we all want. Mr. Carlos. Thanks for the question. Um, so somebody asked me, they said, what are one of the biggest threats that you see to the town of Warrington? And I said, I think it's a lack of communication. They kind of looked at me and said, lack of communication? And yeah, if you look at Broadview, it absolutely boils down to a lack of communications. Talk to the, I've talked with business owners on Broadview, and they say, you know what? Um, they feel like they weren't told, they weren't informed. That's a lack of communication from our elected officials. When we look at things such as even Walker Drive, when you talk with folks there, they said, well, I feel like your elected officials weren't willing to listen to us. Communication is key. And so right now, the plan for uh, Broadview, well, that's all right. If we don't have a complete compromise on one side, we can work to get compromise. Meet them in the middle. All due respect to VDOT. You have folks say, well, you know, VDOT's, you know, kind of the big guys who are pushing this, you know, they'll explain it. Look, on May 1st, VDOT is not walking in there to vote for any one of us on town council. You guys are voting for us, and it's our responsibility to listen to your needs. Thank you. So as of February 23rd, the bill from VDOT was $959,845. If we got up and walked away, that's what you'd have to pay. In addition, we'd lose $6.6 .6 million in federal funding, smart scale funding. If that's what you want to do, I'm willing to do that because I want to hear from you. We've heard from the businesses. The businesses are upset. They've asked for a couple things. They've asked for a stoplight at Gold Cup. They've asked for a free flow right turn lane onto Route 211. I went to the town manager last week, last week, met him and Bo Tucker, our public works director, at the intersection. I said, how can we do a demonstration project here to see if a free flow right turn lane would work? So we're working on that to see if that would work. Working with our businesses is what we need to do. But next Monday in our budget session, I'm going to recommend the town council puts this on hold. We need to stop spending money on this project because we haven't heard from you. The public meeting scheduled for May 17th has been postponed until August. Well, if we're going to keep spending money on this project, I want to hear from you before we do spend any more. So I'm going to ask council on Monday to suspend this project, suspend VDOT from spending more money on design, and hold the public hearing. Sure, there may be a couple fuzzy areas, but we can get your general feedback on do you want us to continue or do you want us to walk away from the project? I think it's important that we hear that. Thank you. 
Mr. Reynolds, recently the town arranged to borrow $7 million from a New York bank, and there was some discussion in the council that um, the, the town might consider looking at uh, buying things at a higher bid if it could figure out that keeping the money here locally made sense. Could you uh, tell, me, tell us how you feel about that and with the rest of you? Is that mine? That. Yes, please. I, uh, I was the only council member that made a statement on that when the, uh, when the people came through with the bonding proposal. So we had, I believe, two or three local banks uh, who bid on this bonding. And one uh, local bank was like a quarter of a percent off from the bank that was recommended. And in my opinion, we should have went with a local bank because they support this community, they have uh, employees that live in this community, and so for a quarter of, of a percent, I think it would have been a much better thing to do. But um, it, I, I didn't win that fight. So it's going to a bank in somewhere, Michigan, New York, or whatever. Um, so I was definitely, if they were not within the percentage range, if it's two or three percentage difference, I understand that. We're not going to charge, you know, we're not going to pay two or three percentage more on a bond issue. But if it's a quarter of a percent and we can use a local bank, why would we not do that? Okay. Mr. Carlos. Sure. I'm all in favor of, you know, when we look at these things, if your businesses are going to invest and be in your town, then I'm, I'm a big fan of, hey, let's buy local, invest local, let's try and support our local folks. Um, I will say you got to be careful, though, and, you know, when we get in again, talking about taxes, start talking about borrowing, things like that, be careful. I would always suggest run your town like a business or look at your homes. You know your limits. You know what you, what you bring in. You know what you're going out. When we're talking about borrowing, I think we've got to be real careful that we don't get ourselves into a hole here. So again, I'm all, I very think it's a good idea. Make sure you're living with inside your means and you're being responsible about the resources that you already have. Thank you. I just want to correct the record, and I can post the minutes on my Facebook page tomorrow. I did speak out against this at the council work session. Ms. Reynolds was one. I was the only other person that spoke out. And I asked our town manager for a work session on this very, inter on this very issue, buying local. I think other jurisdictions do it. There's no reason why the town of Warrington can't. I spoke to Ike Miller, Miller Carpets, right here on uh, Shirley Avenue, and he asks all the time, why do these jobs go out of the county? I pay B poll taxes, I pay taxes to the town, why can you not do that? Well, I absolutely agree. Maybe if something's under $50,000, it must be a local business. If it's over, yes, we need to be prudent and make sure we don't overspend the taxpayer's money, but if it's within a certain percentage, why don't we keep our money local? Why does our local government ship vehicles out of the county to get fixed? These are things that we need to make sure we address because, again, if we encourage economic gardening, if we help our local businesses, in turn, they will help us. Thank you. My name is McDonald, and as a good Scotsman, I know how to squeeze a dime. <laughs> <laughs> a quarter percent on $7 million is a lot of dimes. Money is fungible, and bankers are bankers. You go with the lowest bid. It would be nice to use a local business, but we are in a competitive global economy, and this town has to address the fact that we are competing with the Internet and the world, and our businesses have to, just as we have to, cut the mustard. That's how I would approach it. Okay, Mr. Carlos, I think you're up first, and we're coming this way. Um, what grade would you give the town of Warrington in terms of transparency, open government, and communication with its constituents? And explain your answer, if you would, please. Sure. So um, I guess if we're looking at a grade, um, I would probably look to see, give it a C, really. And here's my reason why. When we talked about what are the biggest threats to the town of Warrington, well, it's, I said it was communication. It was this lack of communication. When I, whether I'm talking with folks um, and meet and greets in their living rooms or I'm knocking on doors, first thing they talk about, they say, say, we feel like we are not listened to. We buy into the system. We look to engage with our, our local government. We can't get an answer from them. 
or you know, when, when these folks want uh, some votes, we'll see them, but we don't see them anymore. There's a great uh, video on YouTube called The New Set of Fame by Joel Guerrero, by Tyson's ex. He literally points to Warrington as having everything that a town or city needs to have to prosper and do very well, right? He specifically points to our town night out. Right, and says, this is a town here, in, there it's Faulkner County, and here it's Warrington. It has everything that we need to do. Yet we have citizens who feel like they're not engaged. We have businesses that are struggling to open. We can do so much better, but again, it starts with communication, it starts with listening, and getting a buy-in from all the citizens. Thank you. I'd say a C as well. I think everybody knows from my first days on council, I tried to provide transparency to everybody in town. One of the first things I did was started posting the budget, which then raised a lot of questions about what the town was doing that we had to answer, which is good. You deserve to know what your local government is doing. And that turned into Facebook Live. And even though I got laughed at in the initial months of it, it caught on. Now people that commute to and from D.C., to and from Fairfax, can watch council meetings from the comfort of their home. I've been known as council's open door. I mean, based on the transparency that I've tried to provide. Through walks and, walk and talks on the Greenway with a council member, through coffee with a council member. But in the end, that's me reaching out to my constituents. I think the town needs to do a better job. I challenged our town council a few months ago to go to our website. Think of something you want to find, a phone number of public works, and try to find it in under three clicks. You can't do it. You can't do it. So yes, we improved our website. Pat me on the back, let's move on. The website should be updated on an annual basis. It should. If you go to a business and you have to click three times, guess where you're going? Amazon, I heard it, who said it? Right? But in all honesty, if we need to run our town like a business, we need to have our technology match the same. But that goes the same thing for our employees. Our greatest asset in the town of Warrington is the human resources that we have, the people that we employ. And we need to make sure that we give them the tools and the technology to do their job. You know there's a permitting system being used in Boston to where if you have a permit with the city of Boston, you can see where it is at any time. Whose desk it's on, the comments from the last person, you pick up the phone and call that person. Why can't we have that here? Why can't you have the same level of transparency as any city across the country? Thank you, Mr. Boston. Thank you. Mr. McDonald. I'd break it into two components, the political component and the professional management component. On the political component, I would give them a D minus to an F. And I'd like to draw your attention to the Thursday before, the, the week before Thanksgiving, where they brought up a, a, a reconsideration for a special use permit for the American Legion development. That's a political process, and they get an F in, my, in that regard. In terms of the town management and professional team, I think they're quite qualified and do an excellent job. Bo Tucker is a national, it should be, he should be a national resource. The guy runs a really great shop. He does so on a really tight budget and performs wonders. We've hired some new people, and I think our new town manager is doing great work. So professionally, we have a great staff, and I think they're building it. Politically, we have problems with game playing, of pushing things through, and taking advantage of citizens and not giving the people who live in this town a chance to express their voice. Ms. Ronald. I'm going to give the, the town a B, and I'm going to do that because we have improved. Um, four years ago, uh, we were really in bad shape. And I think I, there is not a council member, if you want to refer to council, that does not have an open door policy. And I'll speak for myself. I have a business in Old Town, so I'm lucky. But people come to me all the time. They don't make appointments, they just walk in. I never turn anybody down. I never do not return phone calls, ever. And I really am pretty sure that every other council member does the same thing. So we have a town manager, and his, probably his biggest asset is his ability to reach out to people. He also never will not return a phone call. I really believe that, and so is our staff. So this transparency business, everything you can, our, our website still needs to be improved. But from where it was, it's 150% better. So everything is a work in progress. And yes, we are working on it. But we have live streaming. We have public hearings on absolutely everything. There's nothing the town council can slide in. Everything is, is out in the open and voted. And if you want to watch it on live streaming or you want to come to a council meeting, if you want to participate in citizens' time, it's all open. We are all there. 
We want you to come and we encourage you to come. Part of this is your responsibility too. If I don't know what's wrong, if I don't know what your problem is, I can't help you. So I can reach out to you as much as I can, but you have to reach out to us too. And I encourage that. And every town council member does as well. This question for all of you and Mr. Polster, if you would. There is folklore that Culpepper has some magic on Davis Street. Do you think the town has done enough to figure out uh, what the disparity is in rents between Warrington and Culpepper or what it is that they allegedly have? No, I, great question. I think one of the things, again, I'm going to go back to is it's not government's job to tell a tenant or a building owner what they need to charge for rent. The market drives that. Um, I, I have had the opportunity to talk to a successful businessman in Warrenton, or excuse me, in Culpeper, that initially tried to come to Warrenton, and he got frustrated with the process. He got frustrated with dealing with the elected officials, and he went to Culpeper, and he reinvested. You know, my family and I, when I first came on council, were told that you're not from Warrenton, so you're not invested in it. So we went out and we purchased a piece of property on Main Street. So we're invested in Warrenton now, and you know what? There is a problem, but we need to address it together as a community. One of the great things I saw two years ago was the Main Street Foundation, or excuse me, Virginia Main Street came in and did a charrette. There were some amazing ideas that came out of the charrette, and I really hope the new organization, Experience Old Town Warrington, picks up those ideas and runs with them. Because at the end of the day, what's going to drive Main Street, what's going to drive the occupancy rate is business, is creating the space. I know everybody, see if anybody chuckles, I'm going to bring up parklets on the way left. So, you know, our comp plan calls for open spaces on Main Street. It calls for place, pe places for people to sit, places for people to linger, places for people to eat, places for people to listen to music. Well, a six-foot sidewalk with a two-foot um, bistro seating and two chairs just isn't going to do it. You need to create a space, create people want to, a place people want to stay, a place people want to be in. The Spiregan study from the late 80s, early 90s was exactly that. We have a stack of studies in the basement that nothing's ever been done with. We have a, a line item in the budget, $15,000 for space needs analysis for town hall. Guess what? Give me the money. We're out of space. Thank you, Mr. Polster. I think Culpepper has several advantages over Warrington with regards to its uh, real estate. Its, um, its stores are bigger. They're multi-story. They're four and five stories. There are more of them. They have critical mass. There's a destination you can there you can go to there now. And when I first came to Warrington, Warrington looked like the shining star. Now Culpepper has kind of stolen that from us, which is why I think we really need to address six acres of parking. It is an economic black hole. It it brings no revenue. It gives no excitement to life. There is nothing you can do there. We have to change that. And until we change the ratio between parking and real estate in our center of town, you can rearrange the parking times. You can put out kiosks and do all sorts of wonderful things, but you're fighting against yourselves. We need to think about putting in maybe a small movie theater, maybe a climbing wall, a promenade back there, structured parking off of Horner Street, down on the steep section of the park, so that we maximize the available land for future development and economic stimulus. These are the sort of things that will make a difference. And I want to talk about Sonny's open door policy. Sorry, Mr. McDonald, I'll cut you off right there. I'll come back to that one. I was just getting warmed up. Okay, we're back down there. Ms. Reynolds? Yes, we, we hear a lot about why aren't we like Culpeper. Well, first of all, I don't think we really want to be like Culpeper. Um, we are our own community. Um, this is a lovely town. We have work to do. I sit on the board of Experience Old Town Warrington on the planning uh, committee. Part of the th reason why uh, I think Culpeper is uh, successful at the moment is because of their Renaissance program. So they have a Main Street program, they have a Main Street uh, uh, paid position, uh, which we, are, we just hired somebody here to help with, uh, with, uh, with all of this. 
And the gentleman that owns uh, It's About Time, you know, that has to be 20 plus years ago that he tried to come here. Things have changed, so I'm tired of listening to that uh, scenario as well. Um, uh, Culpeper has a train station. Culpeper has larger uh, 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 buildings than we do. So it's not really, uh, we really can't compare the two. We need innovative businesses here. We need businesses here where uh, we're not competing with Amazon. So that means something like a uh, cooking classes. Why does somebody open, a, open a, a shop doing cooking classes? All over the world, they're giving cooking classes. And wine tastings. And why don't we have a shop that features our, our, our Virginia wines? There are many things that people have to touch, feel, and smell. And that's the businesses we need on Main Street. And I hope our economic development person is out searching for those businesses. That's his job. We need connectability. We tried to get the, the walkthrough between the post office and the, and the uh, Ms. parking lot. Reynolds, lines. I'm sorry. I'm going to cut you off. It's okay. I haven't got cut off yet. Do I get brownie points? For that? Yes, you do. Thank you, too. So uh, let me address the, the magic of Culpeper. I think Culpeper is captured on something. Um, the idea is good business is good business is good business. For a long time, like I said, I've worked in Old Town, and you kind of get this idea that Old Town business is kind of pitted against Broadview business. And that's just completely, and if the two of them are, are working together, you know, one of them's got to fail for the other one to do well. That's just not correct. Well, policy, government's job is to create policy. What does Old Town have right now if we don't even have a movie theater or bowling alley. Old Town can, uh, can give you an experience. That's what we've got to focus on. Folks aren't coming to your stores to buy shirts or pants or going to Amazon. But if you can provide them with an experience, then they're going to come back. You want to have a robust shopping experience? Then you've got Broadview. Policy needs to help each sector do well. That's the magic of Call Pepper. Each sector um, is able to play to their strengths. And that's what we've got to look to do at Warrington. Thank you. Okay, Mr. McDonald, you're first, and you've already started on this topic, but let's, let's talk for a few minutes about downtown parking. Uh, we've talked about parking structures, a parking deck here forever. Um, does Warrington have a, downtown Warrington, have a parking problem? Uh, if not, fine. If so, how do you address it? Okay. We definitely have a parking problem. We have six acres of parking, two acres of real estate that does our economy, which includes our government and courts. We have a black economic hole surrounding our downtown, and until we change that, we will not move from where we are today in any meaningful way. Structured parking, because we're a hillside town, is critical to maximizing the density of that parking to liberate land for a better and higher purpose. I, with my Library 2.0 proposal, put forward a library with structured parking that would start that renaissance pro process. It would put in place the most affordable structured parking with direct access to two of our main arteries in the center of town and one block distance from two other main arteries. And it's only 500 feet from the courthouse. It would also provide parking for the old library, for its utility, which would more than double its economic value. Because right now, when that building gets repurposed, if they pay attention to our ordinances, they can't build out the full building because it only has nine parking spaces. Putting in structured parking under Library 2.0 starts the process. You can then take the parking that's behind Main Street, redirect it into that parking space, and start developing the area behind Main Street as phase two, which would include more structured parking. Further, in my plan, we Mr. would- Mr. McDonald, I'm sorry, this is gonna have to cut you off. <coughs> okay, so we go to the other end, Ms. Reynolds. Parking, yes, everybody just loves to talk about parking. Um, I spend um, uh, most of my time recently talking to either property owners or businesses on Main Street about parking. Uh, we seriously just did a survey for uh, businesses on Main Street and whether they wanted parking to be one hour or two hours. It used to be uh, two hours, we changed it to one hour, not, or vice versa. Anyway, we are uh, listen to the merchants and we are going to change parking on Main Street back to two hours. 
Um, we had a parking study done. We do need additional parking in uh, the immediate Old Town area. I have been for a parking garage uh, for a long, long time. Parking garages are very, very expensive. So when we do a parking garage, it'll have to be public-private, or we'll have to work with the county. Um, I'd like to see our employees, our, our employees for retail, our employees for the county, our employees for the town, they all have to park all day long. So right now what they're doing is out there, they're doing the shift every two hours. So, and I'll try. It is ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous that they have to leave their office to go and move their car every two hours. So hopefully in the near future, uh, we have discussed it through the liaison committee with the town and the county. Um, so hopefully we will get this going. Um, but it is extremely costly, and that is one of the reasons that's uh, prohibiting this. Uh, when we look at parking, like I told you, I, I've worked in Old Town now for a number of years. And, you know, one of the biggest threats, I talked about um, communication, I talked about complacency. This idea that, oh, we'll get around to it. Look, everybody has known for a long time that parking is an issue, right? And we can't keep dragging our feet. We talk about our business communities and their value. We got to show them, right? It's taking a toll on them. You can't eat a meal. You want to have new restaurants come to Main Street? Try eating a meal in one hour. You can't get it done. I can hardly bring you drinks and serve you before you get out of there. You get a ticket. We've got to, we cannot be complacent in our policies, and we've done it for too long, and our, our businesses are suffering for it. Talk about a parking garage? Great idea. But let's talk about strategic vision. We've got to iron out the problems that we already see in Old Town. If I build a huge parking garage, but I haven't found out how to get tourists to come to Warrington, I've just wasted a ton of money. We've got to have strategic vision and fresh perspective to address these issues. Thank you. So we're talking about garage. We're talking about structured parking. A surface parking spot is on average fifteen dollars to $20,000 per spot. If you go underground, it's twenty-five dollars to $30,000 per spot. So let's look behind the post office. You have 120 spots. Say we do two levels of parking underground and keep the top open for future development, just in case. We're looking at an approximately $10 million project. Say we do one level underground and one level above ground, no usable space. We're looking at about $6 million. Anybody in here want to spend $6 million to build a parking garage in Old Town? I see one hand. Oh, <laughs> Carter. <laughs> Carter. <laughs> he doesn't count. <laughs> so one of the things we hear about Old Town all the time is historical preservation. Historical preservation. Ladies and gentlemen, historical preservation, preservation isn't freezing things in time. Historical preservation is managing change. Warrington needs to change with the times. I agree. We don't have Old Town in Warrington. We're one town, and we need to look at it globally. How can we address this? I think that the way we address this is through public-private partnerships. We can't fund it. The library is the same way. There are communities now that are getting libraries for free because they're partnering with other entities. If you look at Loudoun County, they built two libraries, not a penny of taxpayer money. So we need to address this, and we need to look at those opportunities. Thank you. Ms. Reynolds, and, and then if you would all go this way. A few weeks ago, the head of the the um, Architectural Review, the Planning Commission, the head of the Planning Commission in the Town Council meeting room. Get closer to the mic. I'm so sorry, I can't hear uh, you. It's all right. A, f a few weeks ago, the, the uh, chairman of the Town Planning Commission said that they get more complaints about the ARB than anything else. Does the ARB need a review? Okay, I cannot. You have to hit yeah. that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks ago, the yeah. head of the Planning Commission said that they get more complaints from the ARB than anything else. Does the ARB need a review? Okay. Questions about um, the ARB. Um, uh, the ARB uh, is a, uh, uh, a place where you go in the historic district, as most of you probably know. Uh, to do almost anything to your property or your business. Uh, I feel strongly that we need an ARB. Uh, otherwise, our, our Main Street and our historic area uh, could, uh, could, you know, we could have all kinds of buildings uh, doing all kinds of strange things. So the ARB serves an incredible purpose. Um, we had an incident uh, 
I don't know, maybe a few months ago, whereby we had uh, some people on the ARB who were being extremely strict, uh, gaveling people down at the podium and things like that. I'm not picking on any one person, particularly I think they felt they were doing the right thing and doing, and, and doing a good job and carrying out uh, the rules to the max. I only really think that's our goal. Uh, what we did was, uh, I will. I'm going to give a big shout out, shout out to Carter uh, Neville. He is the chair of the ARB. He has turned that ARB around, and I really believe that people are res are respected when they go in front of the ARB. They are giving su given suggestions on on how they should handle their project. Uh, they're not, you know, they're not turned away and say, you know, just don't ever come back until you fix this um, type of an attitude. So we are improving. Um, for sure, we have, we have, you know, people coming and going on the Planning Commission and on the ARB all the time. I really encourage any of you, if you would like to join the Planning Commission or the ARB, to come and talk uh, to the town manager because we're always looking for people. But I think the ARB is, in, is improved and will continue to improve. Go ahead. Mr. Carlos. So when you look at the ARB and you hear complaints about, you know, the regulations that they're uh, imposing on folks, again, the, maybe the word of the night again is complacency, right? Let's not say the ARB is giving people a hard time. Let's look at the policies which the ARB has to operate under, okay? Let's bring in fresh perspective and review those policies. Hey, if policies are helping businesses come in here and doing well, helping preserve Warrington, look at the way we want Warrington to look, great. But if there are policies in there that just aren't helping us anymore, then it's okay. We can review those things and either remove them or rewrite them. So again, this idea of moving away from complacency, that's what we ought to be looking at. Not blaming the ARB, but blaming policy that's stale. Thank you. So I'm not privy to any current complaints um, reference ARB. Um, I can tell you the ARB operates under guidelines. Those guidelines will be reviewed, I believe, as part of the comp plan. I can confirm that. Um, one of the things we need to do is make sure that ARB doesn't hinder building owners fixing their buildings. One of the things, one of the stories I, I can talk about is our roof needed repaired on 2224 Main Street when we bought it. It wasn't the historic structure, it was the back of the building it was standing seam tin. And they said we had to replace it with like materials is what the town said. I said, okay, well after reading it, you can't see it from any sides, it's not the historic building. I had to go to the Department of Human Resources in Richmond, have them come up, inspect my building to tell the town that we didn't have to do standing seam tin roof. So these are guidelines, and we have to make sure that we're keeping with um, the historical preservation. Like I said before, historical preservation isn't about freezing things in time. It's about managing that change, and that's what we need to make sure the ARB does. Thank you. As an owner of several historic properties, I support the ARB and its goal. I'm not going to go further on that. I like to go back to parking and the impact and the cost of it. And the reason is this. We, he talked about $6 million for a parking garage. What is the economic cost of having all that land not producing a dime? I can assure you we can put together a plan where the cost of the parking is more than offset by the development of that area. It would be a profit windfall for the town boost our economy and raise all boats. It's a win-win if you structure it the right way. On the way out, you will find my pamphlets that most people overlooked, and in there are maps that show the ratio between real estate and parking, images that show successful urban historic landscapes versus ours, and a number of other things I would like you to take a look at. So I'm just putting that out there to go take a look at it. Sunny mentioned about how she runs an open campaign. Three years ago, when I was doing my library 2.0 development and I was in a good mood, I called Sunny up and left her a message. Hi, Sunny, this is Keith. I'm working on a new library project. I'd love to talk to you about it. I'm still waiting for you to check your voicemail. In the three years, I have received not one correspondence from Sonny. I have sent out multiple press releases stating that I was going to deliver a library for $19.7 million. Mr. McDonald, I'm sorry, I have to cut you off. We should have more time. We should have more time. Um, 
Okay, this is a question for all of you. It's a little difficult. Um, this is about annexation, the potential for the panhandle, potentially other properties. Do you think Warrington should explore that, and how does the towns, or how do the towns' limited utilities, particularly sewer, but also water, factor into that decision? Does that make sense? Should the town grow geographically, and does it have the utilities to do so. We start with Mr. Carlos, who worked this way, and we go back to Ms. Ronald. I always get the easiest questions to yes, start you do. with. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we're talking about growth, and again, I think uh, Sean talked about earlier, this idea of smart growth, you hear that a lot. Smart growth, again, is nothing to be a growth in general. When you hear it talk about Warrington, folks get nervous. Hey, we don't want to see anything to grow. We don't want this. When I talk with people, again, their main concern with it, it's not that they don't want growth, they don't want attractions, they don't want things like that. They do but they want to make sure that their voices are heard when we talk about how to better grow things, right? So if we're going to bring entertainment, we got to look at how, how are we structured to do it. You look at sewer. You look at our traffic patterns. These things are policy issues. You can grow. You can manage that. But you've always got to address either your traffic concerns or your sewer concerns. They're just a part of growing, folks. How we manage that, though, matters. Development, it's great. We don't hate developers. We actually encourage folks to come in here and build and invest in Warrington. But it's up to council to set policy and manage that growth in a way that the citizens um, can get behind as well. So that's my answer on growth. Thank you. I think one of the things we need to look at is areas that we already extend water and sewer to. And there are several of them. Um, you may be referring to the boundary adjustment of the panhandle. Um, and that's the area with uh, the car dealerships, IHOP, Outback, that strip right there. The town already serves with water and sewer. So what is the cost to town if we boundary adjust that? Well, I don't know if you know it, but people that are out of the town of Warrington pay more for the town water. I joked when I first came on council, I didn't know that. I said, what are they, gold-plated water lines that go outside of town? Is it different water? So by extending them and being in town, their water rate's going to go down. And we are going to have to provide services out there. So what's the cost benefit of the town doing that? The other thing we need to satisfy is what the state calls a tri-party agreement. All three parties have to be satisfied. The state, the county, and the, and the town all have to say, yes, it's a good deal for us. So I think if we're going to look at adjusting, I'm open to it. I want to see what the numbers are. But I think we should look at areas already serviced by town for water and sewer, not extend our capacity beyond that. Thank you. The numbers that I've read produced by the town staff put the panhandle as economically neutral to negative. In my view, the Panhandle and other expansions of the town are just a backdoor to development and sprawl, particularly the Panhandle, which would just open up a larger area along Route 29 for more commercial development. This is precisely the wrong thing we should be doing. We have lots of available land in town that's zoned appropriately that can be used and maximized. We have to build in and build up. Every time we spread out, we're sucking the lifeblood out of our community. We need to protect the use of our utilities with these developments. When we keep adding services to these new areas we try to incorporate, we're just moving forward the capital investment to upgrade and improve our utility services, which is going to be a big dime. We need to avoid that. So let's build in, let's be smart, let's invest in ourselves, let's invest into our core and use the land that we have. That would be the approach I take. We've been working on uh, discussion uh, about uh, annexation of the uh, Panhandle now for over a year in the liaison committee the, between the town and the county. Um, we're waiting on figures, actually, because the only reason we'd want to do this really is money. So we have a lot of restaurants along there, so that means that we, we would get meals tax. The county does not collect meals tax. The biggest uh, problem is police enforcement uh, right now. So the county can presently enforces that. Um, if the, we took it over, it would be the town responsibility at some point. Uh, so that means we'd probably have to, uh, uh, Chief Battle has informed us that we would probably have to uh, add one or two police officers in order to be able to do that. So does that offset the money that would, we would be getting by meals tax? We're working on those figures, but there is some empty property there that hasn't been built on, so there's also room for a more potential growth, um, business growth, commercial growth. So that's our dilemma. Um, as soon as the money, if it makes money, sense for us money-wise, we probably should do it. If it doesn't, 
There's no reason to do it. This is a question about the good fairy. If she were to show up and you could ask her to grant one or two things for Warrington in the future, what would they be? Mr. Polster? What would... If you were to... I have a genie to come yeah, to Warrington? Yeah, genie comes... I'm going to spring her first, probably. Wait. Say again? What, 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 would I, what would I ask for? Correct. What does the town need the most? <laughs> what would you like? So I, I think one of the things that we need to look at when we look at this is quality of life. I, I think one of the things that we need to do is make sure that we continue to build that, continue to build a quality of life for our families. You know, one of the reasons why I got involved um, several years ago, and I can't believe it's already gone by, was a Christmas parade. Um, and, and from there on out, we kept building events. Um, I, I mean, just, just some of them. I mean, I want to continue events in town. I think they build community. They build the character of the community, and people want to be part of something. Um, this past four years, some of the things we've done, we've done a piano in the park, Warrington Town Limits, fishing at the reservoir. We've received a platinum award for healthy eating and active living. There's only two other jurisdictions in the entire Commonwealth of Virginia that have that, and that's Williamsburg and Charlottesville. We received five gold medals for the Let's Move from the White House. One of our programs, Wharf on Wheels, was featured by the White House nationwide. Movies in the park. We came out with a calendar of annual events, wayfinding signs, sharrows, food truck Wednesdays coming at the wharf if you haven't heard. Uh, Warrenton Youth Council. I think we need to continue to build activities. I'd ask them to continue to invest in us and help our community build the quality of life that we have here. Thank you. So I would agree with Sean regarding the quality of life. I'd like to see more creative entrepreneurs coming into town, bringing that certain something that we can only possibly imagine at this point. More restaurants would be nice, and I think um, we need to have more play areas for children, challenging play areas, rough, maybe they have these uh, playgrounds where kids can go off and be adventurous, or maybe a climbing wall, something like that. Just things so that, you know, people can go out and enjoy themselves, express themselves, and um, basically enjoy Warrington. Ms. Reynolds? I think if, uh, if, if, this is a much more serious note, I guess, but if I would like to make sure we have the opioid and drug uh, problems of the town of Warrington under control. That's extremely important to me. I work uh, with a county uh, a lot on this, and uh, just to give you a little bit of an update, we are getting um, a rezoning application that's going to be coming to the town for the mental health building, which is on its way up to Capitol, on, up on the way to Hospital Hill. Um, I do believe the county is going to turn that into a, a full bed rehab center. So this is something that I wish I could do yesterday. Um, but it is coming, and um, I'm very, very excited about that. On the other hand, I would like to see uh, cooperation uh, uh, with the town police, with the Blue Ridge Task Force, to stop some of these drugs coming into the town and and prosecute some of the people that are that are pushing the drugs because it's a two-way process. It has to work side by side. So I do believe we are going to put an officer uh, on the Blue Ridge Task Force. I think we'll, which would be um, uh, very very helpful uh, to helping counter some of this um, drug abuse here. But if you think we don't have an opioid problem here, you're wrong. Um, we do. So we have to, we have to push forth with this. So uh, putting in a, uh, a full bed rehab place is, is very important. I think we got the right spot. We got working with the county, so it's going to be a, a, a town county um, uh, effort. So that would be what I'd like to do. Um, so for that question, I agree with everybody on the panel. I agree with Keith when uh, he was talking about challenging activities. When I first said I was going to run, I talked about the old wire factory, and every time I drove by it, I saw opportunity. I saw a ninja warrior gym. Some people were probably like, what was that? And they thought it was crazy. Now I hear people kind of echoing those challenging things for our kids. I agree with Sean. Movies in the park, it's a great idea. Ms. Reynolds talking about drugs and things like that, on top of that. Yeah, we absolutely need to do that. My wish would be, how do we do this? We need a buy-in. You do this by using your citizens. We've got to get our citizens engaged. You want to tackle drugs? Then it's going to start with all of our citizens being engaged to tackle those things. If we do movies in the park and nobody comes out, well, then we're at a loss, right? We build climb walls. No one comes out. We've got to get a buy-in from our citizens. Look, when I first came out and said I was going to run, 
I did it with a cell phone. I did it at the, a local diner. People say, really? I don't know. That's the best way to come out. In three days, I had 5,000 views. People were like, oh, I think I know exactly who you are. This is the guy who's running. We can use similar things to continue to get larger buy-ins from our town. We need fresh perspective in order to get a larger buy-in from our towns and, and you know, to be able to accomplish all these things we're doing. Thank you. All right, we're now moving to closing statements. You have one minute each. We're going to go in the same order. I'll just remind you of the order. We're going to start with Mr. McDonald, followed by Mr. Carlos, then Ms. Reynolds, and finally at the end, Sean Polster. So please, Mr. McDonald, you have one minute for your closing remarks. Well, I'd like to thank everybody who came out tonight. It's good to see um, the interest. I'd like to thank the other candidates for their inputs and ideas. And I'd like to thank our moderators for taking care of this process for us. I think Warrington is a fantastic town with a bright future. And if we continue to invest in ourselves and manage things as we go forward, we can, we can resolve a lot of the things that we're currently facing. And I would like to have the opportunity to do that, to work with each and one of you to make that change happen. Thank you. Well, again, thank you all so much for coming out. Uh, I appreciate it. I'm excited to be out here with you. I'll close on this. We've all been using, we, we worked on a project, right, where you've been working so hard on it and you can't figure out how to get that thing done and you keep getting the exact same results over and over again. Eventually, you say, you know what, I need to take a step back from this and I'll come back to it in a little bit. You get a fresh perspective. This is where I believe we find Warrington at right now. We're stuck in, uh, you know, lack of communication, um, this idea that we're okay. We need fresh perspective for Warrington. I encourage you on May 1st to use one of your votes to bring in some fresh perspective to help serve on council and, you know, help us create everything that we can do together and someone who's willing to listen to our citizens and do these things together. Thank you so much. You got to hold your applause. Just thank you. <laughs> Ms. Reynolds? I just want to answer one thing about the library. First of all, the library is not a town project. It's a county project. So if you wanted to talk to somebody, I hate to roll Mr. Granger under the bus, but he's our center district supervisor, so that's who people should be talking to about the library. Um, I truly feel that th I have no lack of new ideas. Uh, I've, li I've lived in, I wasn't born in Warrington like lots of people here ha have been, but I've been here for 30 years. I've ran a business on Main Street for 25 years. I do world travel, I've been on every continent. I see new ideas and new things everywhere. Bringing them to the town of Warrington is always a wonderful idea. However, the I word does not exist on town council, it's the we. It's always the we. If we don't have cooperation from other council members, if we don't have communication with our, our planning department or our police department or our public works department, we cannot make things work. So it's the cooperation between everybody and the citizens. It's all about you, too. Everybody has to be on the same page to make things work. So new ideas are great. But you have to have cooperation from a whole bunch of people. It's not just me saying, I want this. Ms. Reynolds. Or I did this. Thank you very much. Can you hold your applause, please? We'll do that at the end. Mr. Polster. I serve the residents of Warrenton, have a clear record of economic growth, active, healthy, and community, quality family recreation, and honest government living within its means. I want to take the opportunity, since everybody's here real quick, to thank somebody. Everybody tells me thank you. You do a lot for the town. Well, the person you need to thank is my wife sitting right there. She's the one that affords me the opportunity and watches our three kids when I come to night meetings several times a month. She's the one that affords me the opportunity to do all these things that are great for our community, and I thank you for that. I want to invite you tomorrow to an event we're having called Peanuts and Politics. I invite every member and every candidate to. It's going to be at Fat Tuesdays, 5.30, Peanuts and Politics. As your council member for the past four years, I've had several guiding principles. I've tried to use my voice for kindness, my ears for compassion, my hands for charity, my mind for the truth, and my heart for love. I appreciate the opportunity to represent you. I ask for your support on May 1st, and I also ask for your vote. Thank you very much.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank our sponsors once more, Fauquier Now, Fauquier Times, Fauquier Chamber of Commerce. They deserve a round of applause as well. I'd like to thank Bob Rankin, who handled the sound for us, our host, Middle. Our host, Taylor Middle School, Nick Napolitano, principal, the candidates, the panelists, and thank you, audience, for being such a great audience tonight. Thank you. Thank you.